this sort of time. Yeah, 
because he was still alive. That's about the way he knew that the baby didn't have a mother. He had survived, and he stumbled along, and he finally made it to town. And the baby bear was right on his heels. I think he liked the sandwich. And uh, he went into town, and uh, he said, everybody was scared of the little baby bear. He goes, you know, the cats would hiss at him. I guess they tried to climb his leg, and the hunting dogs made him hunt, you know, hunt, uh, you know, the dogs were big hunting dogs, and some of them are just pets, but most of the time just hunting dogs. They would try to attack him, and so he's trying to protect the bear. And, uh, but he, he was scared of people at first, but then he realized people have treats. They have treats in their pockets. They have treats, you know, something good to eat in their purses. They have it, you know, people go and buy, you know, pull stuff out of their back, the packs on their horses, and in the wagons. I mean, it seems like everybody has treats for them. You know, I think they'll call him Inky uh, for the bear's name. Uh, Inky would just, you know, he loved that. And he went through town having a great time. And the uh, Swede did all of his work there, did the trading the drink the next day, and stayed, stayed the night, and he was off on the trail home. And Inky followed him all the way home. And he was, wow, oh, this is kind of cool, you know. But there's something really bad about having a baby bear as a pet. They don't stay little. Well, all this extra nourishment that the baby bear got, you know, Nicky got, he got big. He was 350 or 400 pounds. He's a full-size grown bear after a while. When the Swede went to town, Inky wasn't afraid of anything anymore. Cats would hiss at him, he'd go whop, knock him across the street. The hunting dogs had come, and some of the dogs didn't hunt very well after Inky got a, done with them. He was really bad with horses, because he could, if he make the horses buck, some tasty stuff might come out of their packs. If he make the horses run, some stuff would fall out of the wagons. I mean, he was a real disaster when he got to town. And Inky really loved it. Sweet, was, oh, man, you know. Well, the, after this one episode in town, the new sheriff met him when he was leaving home, and he says, "Mr. Sweet," he goes, "Yeah." He goes, "You can't bring Inky to town anymore." He says, "If he comes down even close down, I'm going to be obliged to, sh to shoot him." Well, Sweet didn't want that, and then the sheriff hands him this big old new rope. It's right from the store, you can pay for it later, and tie Inky up at home. Well, he thought, oh man, like this, and he looked at this rope, and he didn't have a good rope to tie Inky up, because Inky, 400 pounds, he's kind of strong. And he went home, and he, you know, but a couple weeks later, he has to go back, he's trying to earn money. And uh, that rope was expensive. He knew that rope was going to cost more than what he was going to make on that next trip to town. So he's going to take a couple trips just to pay for the rope. And he goes, oh, man, how am I going to keep Inky safe here? But he decided he has to go. He tied one end of the rope to a tree. And he made sure the rope would reach the food dishes. And he put out four days for the food. He made sure it reached the Columbia River so that Inky could drink. And and uh, he goes, I'll be back in, you know, day and a half, two days. He's going to make, try to make a quick trip. But, you know, he figured he had it all set as best he could. And Inky was still asleep. It was still totally dark when he got ready to go on the, on the uh, trip. He went out there and he tied the rope around Inky. Didn't you wake him up? Just tied the rope. God made sure he had enough room in the collar and all that stuff. And he took off on the, down the animal trails to go to town. He was, oh man, it was like 10 o'clock in the morning, and he heard a noise behind him. And he turned around, and there's Inky. <laughs> he was so mad. And Inky didn't have the rope on him either. He goes, oh, where'd that thing get lost? You know, he has him, hadn't he paid for it. He already lost the rope. And they, and he just ran after Inky, and Inky, was, he, Inky wasn't feeling great either for being left behind. They crashed together, and they fought, and they fought, and fought. And, he had wrestled with Inky before, of course, but 
This time he was mad. And they fought and they fought. Oh, that's terrible. He finally got Inky kind of under control and he grabbed the little rope out of his pack and he tied him up and he tried to get him back home. Inky didn't want to go. He knew it was time to go to, to town and he didn't want to go. And he's trying to drag him. I don't know if you ever put a leash on a cat, but that's kind of the way Inky was. You know, all four legs out or laying down, he had to drag him and just what, whatever, you know, pulling one way, pulling the other, trying to bite him. Tried biting a lot. Uh, but, you know, the Swede, he just kept, you know, knocking him back from the bites and kind of, you know, doing that thing. And it was almost, well, it was twilight before he finally got back to the cabin. And all the time, looking for the rope, looking for the rope, looking for the rope, you know, there were parts of the rope. And um, he gets down there, gets, gets around, comes up to his cabin and sees the tree. And the rope's still tied to the tree. And he goes, well, that's one good thing. Because he has part of the rope. And he's, and he's pulling the inky along. And he goes, he follows the rope. And the loop is still in there. Uh -oh. uh, it's still there. Uh -oh. And so is inky. <laughs> inky was still tied <laughs> up at that thing. He had looked at, you know, he had eaten all four days worth of food. <laughs> got lazy. And went over there and went to sleep behind the cabin. <laughs> the Swede had caught, fought, leashed, and drug home a fully grown black wild bear. <laughs> now, uh, where was I? Yeah, where was I? <laughs> yeah. No, the moral of the story is stay calm, even in bad situations. <laughs> he could have easily recognized it. That wasn't easy. <laughs> That was not even close to Inky. He would have recognized that, but he got mad. And he just focused, oh no, on me. You know, I now I gotta take him, you know, drag him all the way back home. I gotta tie him up again. I gotta drag, then tomorrow I gotta drive, you know, drive, walk the whole way to town with my backpack, and then come back, start everything all over again. And he wouldn't have to have done any of that if he would have stayed calm. Because God is leading in our lives. He wants us to be calm. He wants to be relying on Him. And if we don't rely on Him, we can't stay calm. We'll get anxious. We'll get confused. And we'll see stuff that doesn't exist. And then we want to, in the sweet case, and we do the same thing. We see something that we think belongs to us, whether it's a, a, a black bear or a cat or an idea or something that we own. And we try to protect it. And God's already doing that for us. He, and he's protecting us. And you know the most important thing that God protects? It's you and it's me. And he protects us because he wants to save us and take us home with him when he comes again. Okay. Thank you for listening. You can go back to your God.